Hello, welcome back. In this segment, I want to talk about one section of this paper written by uh, Professor Revest and uh, Bird Kaliski. Uh, this is an RSA problem uh, paper. Uh, this section number five talks about low public exponent. What happened to V is say three, five, uh, E need not be a prime, but E has to be uh, relatively prime to pi of n. We talked about it earlier. Okay, so uh, in the case when E is three or five, for example, and if the message is a small message, say you have a AES key, 256 bit AES key, and you would like to encrypt the AES key using the uh, recipient's public key. All right, you're using RSA without padding. Uh, I will explain now how an attacker can break if a small exponent is used and the message size is also small, like 256 bit uh, AES key, for example. This is the standard encryption function that we know. We take the message m, raise it to power e, and compute mod n. Uh, the paper uses small n, so I'm also using small n. Uh, e and n are public parameters um, of the recipient, a public key. Uh, suppose you would like to send a message, you would just take m power e mod n and send to c. The recipient will use the uh, decryption key and take c, raise it for power d, he will get back m. So the question now is what happens if m power e is less than n? That means you are having a scenario like this. What is 9 mod 10? 9 mod 10 is 9 because 9 doesn't wrap around 10. So you have this, this nice situation now from an attacker's perspective. Uh, m power e will be less than n. That means the ciphertext c uh, can be easily reversed. Take the ciphertext and compute the eth root. You get back the message m. Okay, that's what I'm going to show to you. Why would this work? Consider this example. If your n is, say, 2048 bit RSA key and E is 5, and the message that you're encrypting is just a 256 bit uh, AES key, okay? And um, let's assume 256 bit AES key is approximately 2 power 256, okay? And you're rising it to power 5. So this is going to be approximately 2 power, let's make it even 1500. This is not 1500, but it's okay. See? 2 power 1500 is still less than 2 power 2048 because you're going to do mod with the 2048 bit number. That means you're going to have no effect when you do mod n. So the attacker is essentially taking the C that you're sending, taking the eth root. Okay, let's do a demo. I'm using E to be five, um, key to be a 2048 bit key. Okay, this is the setup. A e is five. Let's just generate a key. Um, say a, two, a 256 bit AES key. Okay, so message is generated. Let's encrypt the message using RSA without any padding. Okay, let's encrypt this and see what happens. Now we encrypted it. The, the C is a ciphertext that we will send it to the recipient. The recipient will decrypt it happily because he has the private key, or he or she has the private key. But the question now is how can an attacker who is receiving C can recover M? Okay, I'll show you a technique now. First of all, let me show you the message that we are encrypting. The 256-bit AES key is this. And I'm going to extract the same message just from the ciphertext C. By, by taking the fifth root of the ciphertext, he or she would be able to recover the secret message M. This is exactly the same message that you're seeing. The L is just the Python adding a L for long messages. To make sure that your M power E is greater than N. Otherwise, it's not going to wrap around, uh, this attack is possible. If you use padding, this is um, usually not possible uh, because by padding, your M is already a very, very big number. M will already be a 2048 bit number if your key is also 2048 bit number. But there are cases where you would like to use RSA without padding. In that case, you just need to make sure that M power E is greater than N. Okay, that's all. Thank you very much.